Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is the Paddock Podcast. It's a big day, so we've got the big guns out. Joining me, as always, is Mr. Joe Smith. How are you doing, son? I'm very well, actually. How are you? Are you still basking? I'm good. Are you still basking in the glory of that point at Anfield? Yeah. You, I am. You're, you might as well be called the Tiger King, because I'm fucking Carol Baskin, mate. Nice. You know I mean? That's silly. I actually know where you thought of that. I never watched. Immediately. Yeah. He, he's quick, in it? I never watched Tiger King. That was either. swift, even for you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, I'm basking in it. I mean, very what people good. were taking the piss out of us online. It was an unbelievable one last week. Do you know what? What it was. Yeah, oh, it was the fair brother. The f- that's fair. Yeah, brother. fair brother. Yeah, that, yeah, was, that was good. That was. Yeah, some that's people an were, but a lot of people said to me like they agreed. Yeah, like, some people were like, oh, you're celebrating a no, no, you pathetic. But a lot, quite a few people tweeted me saying like, do you know what, Jay, I'm with you because I thought we were gonna get battered. Yeah. I haven't seen that many people celebrate it. I feel like. Uh, we celebrated at the end, me and him no, like. I, I, I was, I was happy, I was but it wasn't like a, it was like a celebration. It was more like relief and yeah. thankful. Well, that, like we, we grinded out a, a nil no in in the state we was in, and then being top of the league. And that was the key. first time they dropped points in the league at, um, yeah. at home this season. Eleven out of eleven. Also, if you so. haven't noticed, Ronaldo Brown is with me. Yes, Ronaldo. And I think it's safe to say that Ronaldo Brown is a permanent fixture in this podcast. Right, it seems like it. Well, yeah. you say it like it's a chore, and it seems like it. It's not a chore. Hey. Oh, fucking nice hat as well. There you fl- I love, love talking about, love talk about you both. Yeah. Yes. Good what stuff. are we talking about today, Jay? When we're talking about one of my favourite topics, Dermot Gallagher. Yeah. Well, it's not just Dermot Gallagher, it's Michael Oliver. You can put them both together. Because Michael Oliver Bit of ball disgraced beef. himself um, with that decision to send off Diogo Delo yesterday. Now, we'll get into the ins and outs of it, but basically gave him two successive yellows in the space of 20 seconds. Yeah for dissent. The reason I had an issue with it, it was like, it was one instance of dissent that went on and then when he got the yellow card out, he was still going and he's just given him a second yellow. Seemed harsh. Also, when you look at what Darwin Nunes did earlier in the game where he elbowed Johnny Evans in the chest, kicks the ball away, um, shouts at the linesman and then applauds the linesman. And, and gives him a sarcastic and thumbs up. gives a sarcastic up. thumbs yep. up. All of which are bookable offences. Could have had three yellows, didn't get, he got one, didn't get a second yellow. Diogo Delo in the 92nd minute, gets two yellows. Just no common sense. Michael Oliver making it all about him, mm. trying to probably do Newcastle a favour somehow as well, because he's a Geordie, innit? Um, so we'll get into that. We'll look <laughs> at the inconsistency there um, about what's going on. And also the fact that Dermot Gallagher, and I tweeted this yesterday, I tweeted him about that. wasn't abusive. Uh, I said he'll defend it tomorrow on Ref Watch, and he did. And then when he was asked about the Darwin Nunes thing, he said he didn't want to speak about it. He didn't want to get into it. Mm. So we'll go through the quotes in a minute. First of all, though, a uh, few people in the Super Chat... Don't forget in the chat, sorry, we are going to be in Dublin on the 28th of December. Me, Steve, Joe, McCullough, uh, Wes Brown as well, and Uncle Webby. Mm. Going to be a great night. Come and join us for that live event, a live podcast. If you can get over there or if you're already there, there's a link in the description. Come and get involved. We want to see you guys there. We had a great time. last This time last year we did it. It was one of the best nights ever. So do join us. Uh, in the chat, Ross Murphy says... Paddock podcast time. Um, Santa Not says, and if we can just bring in Peter Walton for his agreement with his old pal Gallagher. Yeah, Peter Walton used to be the guy, didn't he, on BT? Um, Brian Casey in the chat. Santa Notch, obviously, I've already mentioned. Jacoya Trot. Um, loads of people. BMW Racing. Witterbird. Good to see all the usual suspects in there. Jay's Parker. Um, right. So, Joe, talk us through Dermot Gallagher. Because Dermot Gallagher on Ref Watch today was asked about this because. We watched the game. We all watched the game yesterday. And when we saw that double ye- yellow card, we yeah. thought that was pathetic. For A, because of why the, the time, 92nd minute, he could have had a word and said, look, calm yourself. You've had a yellow. Any more, you're going to be off. Yeah. And also, it felt like it was two quick yellows. Like, he didn't have a chance to stop kicking off. He was just kicking off. And then as soon as he's given the first, um, he's, he's done it. He's given the second. Even Jamie Carragher, who's hardly Mr. Manchester United, especially in a game against Liverpool, stuck up for the loan and said he didn't think it was a red card. He felt that um, Michael Oliver could have just had a word with him. What's Dermot Gallagher said about it all? Yeah, so he said, um, talking on Ref Watch, or yeah, I think that's what it's called, isn't it? Saying, um, talking about the yellows. There's one uh, talking about a wave of uh, Dallow's arm because he sort of like throws his arm down like that, doesn't he? Uh, the yellow card hasn't come out then. Now the yellow card comes out uh, and this is the reaction to the yellow. Um, isn't it? Talking about him waving the arm again. Uh, Unfortunately, I don't think it looks good, Rob. Talking to Rob, the Sky presenter. Uh, I don't think it's a good image to be portraying around the world. I don't think it's a good image to be cascading down into football. Uh, That's the remit referees have been given this season. That's why we've had such a high number of yellow cards for this offence. What's she talking about there? A good image to be cascading down into football? 
What's what are you on about? Has he just got word of the day toilet Trying paper? To sound like it's cascading down into football like the cherry blossoms mm. on a summer's morn. What are you on about, you whopper? That yeah. sounds that sounds pre written, that, isn't it? Yeah, cascading down into yeah, football. Good. Sorry, Bill Shakespeare. Just give us your opinion on that and tell us why there's a lack of consistency instead of coming out with drivel. What did he I say was... about the Nunes thing? Sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Yeah, so, I mean, just on the Dallow one quick, I do think it's. It's it's an, it's refereeing to punish someone, isn't it, rather than to try and stop it happening. Like it's just like you were saying, we mentioned it on the recording we did before about why he's actually sent him off for that when normally it's just one yellow. And usually people have a little go as the yellow's coming out, and then they stop just after the yellow, and then we move on, which is what Dallo did. There's often the case where as the yellow's being brandished, the ref is still being showered at. And then they'll sort of stop after, like, as it's coming out. So that that yes, technically, well, the decision to make the yellow was activated, and then anything done after that is 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 sort of earning a second yellow. That isn't really the process that they've been following for the last twenty years, is it? No. That's like if something he's coming up with to sort of justify what's happened, rather than looking at what normally happens and why he's reacted this way. You mentioned it before. That Sam Piljo, who's a journalist and you know friend of the channel, yeah. mentioned about how he thinks that Michael Oliver just got sort Shall of I read that? yeah, yeah. Shall I read it? He got, got me personally thing, offended yeah. by what Dallo did. Yeah, I'll get your I want to get your opinion the on the Dallo one before yeah. we go on to the Nunes comment. Um, he also Sam Piljo goes in on Dermot Gallagher, which is good. He says, "I genuinely believe Michael Oliver will today regret sending off Dallo." As a referee, Oliver lost his composure and got annoyed at the player. He was petty, petulant and lost control. And it was all triggered by his mistakes. I think he's talking about Oliver there, saying, I think he's, Oliver's spat his dummy out. Yeah. So he's got annoyed at the fact the Lowe's like shouting snapping him. and yeah. shouting. So he's gone right. And also, it was, you know, like you say, Oliver made a mistake giving the throw in the wrong way. I mean, okay, the Lowe overreacted. He deserved the yellow. He didn't deserve two yellows. What did you make of it? I was fuming. I, I put a, I, I was fuming anyway, but the fact that it was in stoppage time properly softened it a little bit because there's only a couple of minutes to go. But imagine that was 65th minute. Yeah. 68th minute, we, we've basically grafted for that long to not concede at Anfield somewhere that we've had a dreadful, dreadful record. And yeah. then all of a sudden, um, Michael Oliver gets his feelings hurt and decides to send the low off. And when he did the replay, it did seem just like one yeah. passage. Yeah, it was one continuous thing. It was like thing. one passage of He didn't calm himself like, down and then go again. It wasn't like he got booked and then like... Lost it again. And then went again. No. It was almost like one thing in and he's almost and like flailed his hands right. in the air yeah. and, look, and then was like... And then he looked away and then Michael Oliver just lost his head and just sent, gave him a second yellow for it. And I was confused at first. I thought, okay, had he been booked earlier in the game mm. and that was his second booking and when I found out it was two bookings in the, in the same instant, I was fuming, I was confused. I was like, what's, because I know that Lewis Stunk earlier in the season, I think he got sent off for dissent as well. I yeah. think he got a second yellow for dissent. I think he called the referee a ball or something like that. Trying not to use the C word, Ronnie. Do you know what I mean? But, um, <laughs> I think that's what he called him anyway. I'm pretty sure. You can, you can research and find out. No, yeah, but I, I think that's cool. different because I think booking him once is fair enough, but I think it's booking him twice. That seemed like he almost put too much of his ego involved in it. Yeah. Which yeah. was what was wrong for me. I think well, if you've got a referee, you've got a referee without that. But well, that's the whole Michael point, Oliver loves himself. He loves the attention. And he does. And the, the best referees around the kids, you barely noticed him. But with him, you always notice him. There's always something going on. And that was a game where that game would have gone on for another minute if he'd have booked him. There'd be no controversy. There'd be no discussion about refereeing and all this drama we've had already this season when it comes mm. to refereeing and VAR and everything. And it would have been basically about the football. Yeah. You can argue and debate and discuss the football to blue in the face. But instead, we're talking about Michael Oliver, which is what Michael Oliver loves and what he wanted. And then, you know, like when you have this ref watches on Sky, which could be, right? I actually think that could be a good segment. Mm. If you did it from an objective point of view, and you went, look, the referee got that one wrong, or, or he got that one right, or this is why that decision's been given, this is why a similar decision wasn't given. If you tried to pick the bones of it, yeah. even if you said, I think maybe the referee there, he might have just got a bit emotional himself. He's a human being. He yeah. might have seen his ass because the low's got in his face and he's just had a long game. It's in the 93rd minute. He's, you know, he's been doing his job and he's got a player going berserk because of a throw-in. Then he might have just... Like in that mm. split second, and he may well look regret it in the cold light of day. No one's going to think any less here, other than maybe Michael Oliver, but he doesn't. He yeah. doubles down on it. There's no point of the segment if he's not going to be no, a, at doesn't. least a little bit impartial. I think he just comes on and he kind of spews like 
referee and propaganda and yeah, he's like 100%. he does his best to kind of not to not go against what the referee's decisions made obviously that little bit of referee and brotherhood that he might have but yeah. i think if you've got that fair enough but then don't be on the show because it doesn't make it, 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 it makes it, it, it poor makes, tele- it, it makes poor television when that's, you do that's, that. That's that's a short, especially when it. it looks obvious that yeah. he's, he he knows that the decision was wrong, mm. but he's gonna go on. He's gonna side with the referee anyway, just because. Do you know do what, what I mean? though? That for me, there's, there's lots to go into it. And I'll get into some of the comments in a minute. People might say, "Well, why do you care so much? Why do you bother with it?" There's a reason you care so much about it because these things matter. These affect the season. Like you will have Mikel Arteta after a decision going. It's a disgrace going berserk, giving a speech to anyone who's got a camera about how how dumb by he is, and he won't get punished. You'll have Jurgen Klopp screaming at the fourth official's face, crying conspiracy and all sorts. He won't get punished. Nine times out of ten, Arteta doesn't really moan about the referees. Now and again, he does, but he tends to sort of be less vocal about it. And yet, we've been had over this season by referees time and time again, and that is a bad decision. And you're right; it was in the ninety-second minute, so it's not as um, disruptive. Well, imagine it was. Yeah, that, if that's minute, anything. We, even we with lose. ten minutes to go, we yeah. lose. We'd lose with seven out of fifty. Definitely. And also, you kind of get away with it a little bit because the low out for a game, he's not the most popular player. And Aaron Bissaka comes in, no one really cares. Yeah. No one's going. I can't believe we've not got. If that's Kobe Mainu, it's yeah. an absolute fucking riot yeah. on social media. Yeah, hundred yeah. <laughs> you know percent. I mean? If it's yeah. someone like that, who's Great popular, shout. young Great lad. Shout. Like, yeah. so there's that element to it. And then also we're talking about like, you know, the consistency. This is the thing that really annoys me, both referees and also with Dermot Gallagher when he comes on Sky on a Monday afternoon or Monday morning, because he does this, he does this all the time. It's like when we had that handball where it was the kid at uh, Spurs, was it Romero? Romero, yeah. Handballed it from Garnacho's shot. We didn't get a penalty. A month later, he does the same thing at Arsenal, they get a penalty. Dermot Gallagher's asked about it. He doesn't even give an answer. Today he was asked about the Nunes one. Go on, I'll let you talk about this one. This is go on. Yeah, what so did he say? this is when Darwin Nunes ran up to Johnny Evans. Sort of, it was a shoulder barge, but actually he he almost times it too early. So by the time he gets there, his elbow is actually the first thing that yeah. makes contact with Johnny Evans' middle of his chest. Yeah. Then he knocks him to the floor, which is a foul, possibly a yellow card, I think in, that's it, a yellow card in and of itself. Long. Yeah, hundred percent yellow then card. Then it's he has a shot from the halfway line after the whistle's gone, yeah, which is a clear true. yellow card. Yeah, kick like, the ball away. You know, no question. Then he goes over to the linesman and starts clapping in his face about the decision, which is absolutely like sort of like a, a circuit Descent. in his head is broken. How you think you're not going to get a foul given for elbowing someone in the chest? He's going over to the linesman, clapping in his face, or not in his face, but clapping at him, which is dissent. Then he gets a book in. Then he's giving a big thumbs up to the linesman like that, like sarcastically, like, yeah. you know, again, which is dissent. And he just gets one book in for all sort of three or four of the things that he does. Um, and, and on that, Dermot Gallagher says, uh, it's so, so difficult, Rob, because it's not an exact science, is it? On the one hand, you say to me, I don't want two yellow cards for Dallow. And then two minutes later, you say to me, I want three yellow cards for Darwin Nunes. So I have nowhere to go, do I? Whichever way I jump, you're going to say I'm wrong. I so mean, just uh, not even giving an opinion, yeah. because you know that you can't justify that. Because you've just said the low should have had that second yellow. And now when faced with something that's worse, you can't say the same thing because you just yeah. can't admit that the referee was inconsistent and got it wrong. And he literally admits as well, like, the only reason I'm not going to comment on this is because you'll point out rightly yeah. that I my logic is inconsistent. Yeah. Like, that's it. like he's just saying, I don't want two yellow cards for Della, which uh, that's what the, the presenter said to him. Gallagher had said he thought it was two yellow cards yeah. for Dallow. So he's literally admitting there, I've got nowhere to go, whichever way I jump, you're going to say I'm wrong. Yes, because you are wrong. Like, that's not the presenter's fault. You've said it's two yellow cards for Dallow, and then you presented with this evidence of a similar number of offences, if not worse, more. Worse, worse. Worse, I would say, yeah, yeah, completely. Now you can't follow and apply the same logic you applied to Dallow to Nunes, and you literally admit that because you don't want to get criticised, you're not going to say anything. And also, well, what, sort of, what sort of defence is that? It's not an exact science, so we'll just make it, well, it doesn't matter then, we don't have any Why sort of guidance. Wait, exact yeah. science. It it's not an exact nah, science, it, you can just do it what you want with your ref. It's, it's not meant to be that ambiguous. So it's, no. In, in football, it's rules are rules yeah. when you're yeah. refereeing, so you well, can't you be know. like, oh, it's not an exact also, science. Isn't, cla- what, isn't clapping a decision sarcastically yeah, clapping? Yeah, isn't that a definite yellow? That's almost like a definite yellow. That's a definite yellow. So I don't understand what's going on Kicking the ball away is a definite yellow. The che- the, for me, the elbow on the chest was a definite yellow. Maybe I could argue he didn't see the nature of the foul, but he definitely saw him kick the ball away. I think that's actually what he booked him for. And he definitely saw him applauding the linesman. 
So there's no way you cannot say there's at least two yellow cards there. And also, if you're being lenient, then you go, okay, he's being lenient. He's letting that one slide because he's just he's not that kind of referee or whatever. He's he's not he's, he's approaching the game differently. Fair enough. But then he's approached it differently towards the law where of, he's giving him a second yellow straight away. Here's a thought though. Go Do on. you think the reason why this could be the only saving grace for Michael Oliver? Because realistically, you're looking at the two incidents and be like, if you're a referee. Rules are rules. You've got to referee two incidents the exact same way. You can't have your feelings more involved in one incident than the other. Mm. But maybe the Nunes one, it's more because is it the Nunes v the linesman more than Nunes versus Oliver? Yeah. Yeah. So do you reckon that's what saved Maybe that's Nunes what saved bit? him. Because but, but, you're not, but you're not meant to treat the linesman any different than the referee. Like you can't well, you know, go over and that, abuse exactly, the, the linesman. But you're the not allowed to do that. You can't, but the referee, the referee's obviously going to have a little bit more of his ego involved. That's right. The, the, I, I that hear you. 100%. Whereas the I linesman, linesmen's are always a little bit more on the side of things and they, well, they little, can't give you a they're a little bit more tentative anyway, about making they? decisions yeah. but, the so line, but the referees one of the, like part of his job surely should be to protect the linesman as well as himself like if you've got a player mm. who's screaming at a linesman obviously the linesman can't do anything about it surely the referee needs to step in and let's not forget as well this time last year when we got beat at Anfield all the talk was like let's hang Bruno Fernandes from the nearest tree because he touched the linesman because the linesman got in his way and he moved him out of the way and people were acting as though he'd one arrowed him. It was just, just ridiculous. Do you just think the refereeing at the moment in the Premier League and in this country is just shocking? Yeah. Compared to what the Premier League as a league in terms of compared to other leagues I meant think, to be? I think there's two settings of referees in, the, in, the, in this league. They either don't make a decision, leave it to VAR, or they make a bad decision. Like, there's no, in, there's no consistency where you go, okay, yeah, he's got that one right, he's gone for it. Even when it's obvious half the time, they just leave it. It's funny because obviously VAR was meant to kind of prevent certain types of human error in terms yeah. of refereeing. But then all it's made is you've got humans operating a VAR making errors still. Yeah, yeah. Just and it just... It, so I've got the FA's website here, which is literally thefa.com, and there's a list of caution offences include, but are not limited to, you know, there's loads of delaying the start mm. of the play, deliberately entering the technical area of the opposition team, dissent by word or action, including throwing slash kicking drinks, bottles or other object other objects, actions which show a clear lack of respect for the match officials, e.g. sarcastic clapping. Yeah. It is literally the only example listed as a thing that you give a yellow card for. So when Gallagher says there, it's not an exact science, it's so, so difficult, it's not an exact science. It's not an exact science. Dallow's one, you can argue was a yellow or not. The Darwin Nunes one, on the FA's actual website, it literally lists sarcastic clapping as a, as a cautionable offence, and that is the only example it gives. Do you see what I mean? Like, no disrespect to you, bro, but you're like, you know, a YouTuber from Workshop who's yeah. Googled that and found out straight away. You're not paid a lot of money to go on Sky as a professional referee or an ex-professional referee whose only job is to analyse decision and who's had a sweat, almost a 24-hour heads up on what, or a 12-hour heads up on what he's going to be discussing. And yep. he can't even find that research that you've just found within a minute. I think like he doesn't know it. I think Ref Watch and Dermot Gallagher and, and how he is on that program, it's almost like an embodiment of what's wrong with the referee and, and society in general. <laughs> society, <laughs> society in general. <laughs> nah, I think yeah. he, he's almost an example of what's wrong <laughs> with the referee because the yeah. world. <laughs> because I think managers, players, and usually everyone else in this sport are more held accountable for mistakes and stuff that they do wrong. I think referee, for example, if a manager gets something wrong or players do something wrong, they've got to like, conduct interviews. They've got to answer for it. Yeah, yeah. they right. get they've sacked. Got, they've got post. Uh, yeah, yeah. They've got post-match yeah. press conferences. And, yeah. And whereas a referee, like, makes a mistake and completely decides a game or just has a massive blunder, like I think I feel like he did on the weekend. And Michael Oliver doesn't have to answer for it. He doesn't have to explain his decision. He doesn't have to have any post-match interview explaining why he did it. I feel like there's almost, they know that they, there's no accountability because they know they can get away with it almost. And mm, I think that yeah. kind of lessens, because I think referees need to be held more accountable for when they make the type of mistakes that they're making. Well, yeah, I, I yeah. agree. But before, before we carry on, I want to talk okay. a bit more about this, but before we carry on, Manscaped. Yes. Sponsor today's show. <laughs> and now Manscaped, it's, Santa is coming. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I don't know if I want to go down this line. <laughs> okay. And you know what? If you, want, dirty, if you want a silent night in the bedroom, Pause. you don't want yeah. the rustling of overgrown pubes. No. Do you know what I mean? You want 
the gentle velvet shush yeah. of a well-trimmed genital area. Yes. Don't you, Jay? And with yeah. Manscaped's fifth generation performance <gasps> package, they are providing you and millions and millions of other men with the best grooming kit on earth. I can't believe we're actually at a stage now where we have reached the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Ultra. It is here. It is. As they say in the South African World Cup, feel it, it's here. Exactly. You can, because and you've got the performance package, 5.0 Ultra. Joseph, tell Yeah, and there. using the code DEVILS20, yeah. which is <laughs> devils, like, you know, full-time yeah. devils it used to be. Devils, the red, red devils. devils. That, yeah. You know it is. Yeah. DEVILS20 at checkout. You get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Now, let's talk about the performance package 5.0 Ultra. Five. So in there, you've got the lawnmower 5.0. Now, this is... What is this? This is... It's a marvel of model te modern technology. Yeah, this is the Usain Bolt yeah. of, of uh, you know... Male grooming kit. Male grooming. Yeah. This is the world record breaker. Yeah. This is the one that you go to if you want the job done properly. 100%. It's got everything you'll ever need. It's got multiple different blades. It's got the close foil blade for that extra polish, that extra buffer. It's also got the longer standard blade that you're used to as well. I love the fact it's got a multifunctional on off switch as well amazing yeah you've also in there you've got the weed whacker 2.0 in the performance package the ear, the ear and nose hair trimmer Need then that. you've got the extra special stuff as well the boxers 2.0 you've got the shears 3.0 nail grooming kit it's all there it's not nail clippers it's shears 3.0 nail grooming it, kit it's, it's different grooming it's better kit. it's absolutely fantastic how much is shipping <sighs> i mean bloody free with our code what? yeah 20 percent off as well the main price of the body of the work and you're getting free shipping <laughs> I mean, this is just like Christmas. It's, come early. it's ludicrous. Christmas has come early, and so will you with Manscaped. Use the code <laughs> DEVILS20. Actually, that's not a compliment. That's a bad thing. You won't. You'll do the opposite. Use the code DEVILS20 at checkout and say ho, ho, ho to well-groomed mistletoe with Manscaped. Thank you once again for sponsoring the show. I literally use Manscaped all the time, and I'm going away for a little Christmas break yeah. uh, in a couple of days, and I'm going to be using it before I go so that everything's in working order down there. That that's fantastic. Yes. There you go. Um, thank you good, to good for sponsoring this podcast <laughs> and good luck on your little Christmas break. Thank you. Um, I think, I don't know where I've, whether I've read some of these out, but I'll read them again. It's a duck who's been a member of the first team for 15 months, says Ref Watch is trash propaganda at this point. He keep, keeps making false arguments to avoid answering the question. Kind of defe defeats the point of the show. No. Uh, Danny says calls are subjective. It's okay to call out mistakes. Um, Danny uh, says, Another example of ref inconsistency. Job is to keep 22 players on the field mm -hmm. to ref not affect games. Ref should interview after games. Why not? The thing that I don't like about this as well with all this referee shenanigans going on, like Eric Tanag is probably under more pressure than any manager in the Premier League right now. Mm -hmm. That could have cost him his job. Mm -hmm. Now that sounds melodramatic. People go, oh, Jay, what are you on about? We'd have lost Anfield. There's a good chance he's done. And especially, I, and I don't know if it was as black and white as him losing. I thought if if he if he lost badly, okay, yeah. okay, uh, badly. I think if he lost one nil and we played like all right. Said, if that red card is in the fiftieth minute, yeah. and we go on to lose three or four nil, which yeah. is more than possible after we saw what happened against Copenhagen. Yeah. Because once they got a goal, when you gone, you know, the yeah. floodgates would have opened. Probably, yeah. So that could have cost him his job, and it's a bad decision. And it's a referee that will make that decision or be refereeing again next week yeah. when Eric Tanag is in the job centre, no. and it annoys me. We've got a little list here that, that we put together, which I love the pettiness of. This. I've got so, one that's not on it. That so I'm these are some some, uh, some Michael Oliver best bits. Uh, he sent off Buffon in the Champions League quarterfinal after protesting uh, that of Michael Oliver's decision to award a stoppage time penalty, uh, which led to Real Madrid's winning goal. I love this. We're talking about in times he sent yeah. off Buffon in the Champions League. Uh, he also, this is my favourite one, he, get, he once gave a penalty to Plymouth and sent off the Birmingham keeper in a championship game, even though he later admitted that it wasn't a foul and it wasn't a red card. I love that. Uh, Michael Oliver admitted that this was a game where he was attempting to get into the Premier League. So this was when he was on the way up. Well, yeah. do you not remember the Joe Hart one? Well. Where Joe Hart stuck his face into Michael Oliver's head. Oh, yeah. Uh, when we played, we played City at the Etihad, and Chris Smalling, his infinite wisdom, when they were trying to counter, <laughs> Joe Hart went to throw the ball out, and Chris Smalling stood in front of him. So, so Michael Oliver booked Chris Smalling, and bu but despite the fact he was booking Chris Smalling, Joe Hart lost his head, ran over to Michael Oliver and stuck his head on him. Now, Michael Oliver just stood there. He didn't like, it's not like he knocked him over or anything, but it's obviously... Yeah, a red card. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that to a referee. No. Like it's ludicrous yeah. to, to think you can go and just stick your head into a referee. Yeah. Like if that's any, if that's anyone in red shirt, they're off straight away. 
He didn't even book him. Like, he just left it. And it was like, the most annoying thing about that as well is Chris Moore got a second yellow later. Got sent off and we lost. But, like, there's no consistency there. That's the issue you have, is this consistency. And I'm sick of, right? You know when the teams are announced? Now, it's like the referee being announced. I know the referees get announced a long time before the teams do. That's almost as important. You go, oh, no, not him. <laughs> no, what you yeah, yeah. Think, think you're saying about a few refs now. Nah, true. Like, was it Andre Mariner last year? Who's the top he's ref now? now? Who's like the top Probably ref. Michael Oliver. That's the biggest game of the season. He yeah, got it. Yeah, because he's meant to be like... Mm. Was, was he one of the youngest him, refs in, in the In fairness to him, and you said this before, he ref the rest of the game pretty well. I thought he actually let a few things go. The yeah. But then you more than ruin that with this like monumental decision that you're making for no reason. No, like sending it, someone it, off should be a last resort. Every decision he did up to then, I didn't really question too yeah, much. Was like fine. there was the one where like, there was a couple of yellows which you, you think were yellows. I remember saying that's a yellow. Mm. Like even ones against us. The like main the, one. The main new one. I think there was an Amrabat one where you go, you go. He's, he's tried to t sort of clip him or take him down. Like, it's a yellow. There was another one they had as well. I can't remember. But I, I wasn't really thinking of Michael Ol Oliver going in the night second minute, which is where a referee's doing his job because it's a big game. It's a lot of, you know, tempers can flare. It's, it matters a lot. Obviously, this means more, as the scouts always say. All that nonsense. So you got to have some of that, though. you got to have some of that. If you're a ref, you know the magnitude of the game. The Lowe's has basically done a 40-yard sprint back to stop Salah getting on on goal. Yeah. He's thought he's won a throw-in, which he rightfully thought. He's frustrated mm. at the decision. His adrenaline's up, his, his emotions he's are in nearly it. got a, a big result yeah, as well. Yeah, nearly got a big result. Minute, it's yeah. in Anfield. Him berating you a little bit because he thinks that he sh the decision should have gone the other way for all the effort he's put in. I think you can't be booking him twice for dissent for that. Especially when, when you looked at the replay, he said something initially, which probably could have got him booked because maybe it is, it is within the rules of the game. But I think the second yellow, He's just a man getting his feelings hurt. And I thought that, because I, I did tweet about it. It's the second time that he's given someone, I said Martinelli got sent off for double descent. It wasn't actually double descent. He did two like- Two fouls, wasn't it? It was two back But to I thought like, wasn't that a bit weird? It was a, it was a weird decision. Can basically, you see that against Wolves? He's, he's, committed, God, a, tell, he's yeah. committed a foul. Uh, Michael has played advantage. And then he's committed a foul again. I saw that, and yeah. I actually think he was. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I he was more. So, I and it was it's, a decision, so he's booked. He's booked. To, he's Mate. booked him twice for it. Yeah. So I remember that, and I was like, "Yeah, Michael Oliver did that as well." But um, it, 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 it was probably the right decision on the face of it. But it was still a bit weird. That, it was a bit harsh. Do you bit, know what I mean? That is a bit different though, because that yeah. is two separate fouls. Yeah. And it's like if you yeah. walk up to someone, they're running for a goal, and you one arrow him. And then they carry on running and you run around. And it's not like it's just one thing, it's two yeah, different yeah, things. Two separate which and he tried, you know, he yeah. did two fouls. Like, I understand. But what the thing with the, the Lowe's instances, it was one thing he did. Yeah. He was still going mad. And you think, like, from the first, like, mm -hmm. his one continuous going mad for 10 seconds. When Mike Oliver's give him the yellow card, he's still like, and then he started calming himself down. And Michael Oliver's whipped it out again. As yeah. though he's, he's he hasn't Oof. reacted to the yellow. Dave McGallagher was full of it today when he yeah. said he, he was. I just don't. I don't think that's I, true. I, I can't. But if it, speaking of watch. people getting the the feelings hurt, should we talk about Van Dyke a little bit? Because this became a bit of a talking point after the the um. This this is why this is why I, Roy Keane is literally my favourite ever United player. I, so I, I, I love an interview yeah. after the game, yeah. and he's got this is Van Van Dyke's whole persona is this sort of the smug. I never have to sprint. I'm cooler I'm so than everyone. Good. Yeah, I'm so cool. Like whatever. Like I remember one time I watched an interview with him, and he said, "Who's the best striker you've ever played against? Who's the and and his answer? And you think like he's playing against some top players, like people who have done him as well. Yeah, like Martial, Martial, for instance. But like, <laughs> didn't like, he? Southampton, yeah, didn't he? Like, but all sorts of players, Mbappe's and this and that. And he's like, oh, I don't know really. Probably Giroud. And he went. And he didn't even score very well. He didn't even play that well against me. I don't even find it that hard to play against him, but he just scored a few times. And just like the answer of a prick. You're like, <laughs> yeah. just, like just have a yeah. bit of humility and say, yeah. you know what? I'll be honest, Mbappe's a fucking handful. He was, and it was like, he was, Giroud. He was, and it's not even because he's good, but it's just because he Was it his son that sat him on his ass? Yeah, loads of people. Marshall like, did it when he was at Southampton. You don't remember? I know people think I'm taking a mick now. No, no, but, but he when did. he was at Southampton, you don't remember Marshall got that brace against him and yeah. sat him down? Like, it was like, everyone was like, right. But, but it's like, oh yeah. Who's the best player I've ever played against? Probably myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's the way he said Giroud. He said, yeah. Giroud. he said Giroud and backtracked on it. He said Giroud, but was like, yeah, but even even him. Yeah, and he's like, I mean, and it's yeah. not even because he plays that well, or I find it dead hard to play against him. He's just 
you know, he just turns up with a goal here and there. You're like, mate, just give someone else a bit of credit. Or if, or if you're going to say to Rude, just stick with it and be like, yeah, he, he, he give me a little bit of a handful physically. Yeah, or whatever. he's a top player, massive good player. Rated. But he couldn't, he, he's just, that's what he's like though, isn't it? That's his whole persona is the big, powerful, egotistical, kind of suave, smug, Centre back, and then after the game, he was interviewed and he was saying, "There's only one team we wanted to win today." Um, you know, United set up to to get a draw, and they're absolutely buzzing with a draw. Um, and then afterwards, Roy Keane, basically, I think quite rightly, sort of ripped into him about, you know, yeah. Have you got so any, there's have been you got a bit of back there? and forth here on yeah. this. So after the game, Virgil Van Dijk was interviewed, and he said, "If you see how we played the game, we had most of the ball and created some opportunities." Okay. There was only one team trying to win the game. Well, that's obviously not true. Uh, we want to win every game, and of course, that is why it's frustrating. Sometimes we shot too easy and could have passed on the overlap. The right decision was sometimes lacking. In the end, they are buzzing with a point, and we are very disappointed. Now, Roy Keane was having none of it. He said, after the game, Roy Keane was asked, and he said, Wilson van Dijk had arrogance coming out of him. Uh, he, needs to remind, he needs a reminder himself. He's playing for a club who've won one title in 30-odd years. He's saying the only one team wanted to win and that United are buzzing with the point. United are in a difficult place, like Liverpool have been in a difficult place for many a year. So maybe that bit of arrogance backfired on him today. And then Van Dijk has responded to that, I think. Um, and he said, I like Roy Keane. If he said that, then it's fine. He's Manchester United throughout and I understand he could react like that. But I felt what I said. And there is absolutely no arrogance in that. Everyone who watched the game probably felt the same. We move on, we had the opportunity and we couldn't score. And that's the frustrating part. Sounds a little bit humbled there, slightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's from the Liverpool playbook, right? Because I remember when um, we drew with Liverpool and the Joes, I don't even remember the nil-nil. Sorry? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what you said then, I'm scared. Um, yeah, we drew with Liverpool and the Joes at nil-nil at Anfield. And Klopp had won one of his last days on a little bit of pressure because this was before he'd won anything at uh, Liverpool. I remember him coming out, sort of slagging off United and saying, oh, you know what, we, we, we went for the win and all this. And during that game, I think they took off like two attackers for two midfielders or two. Mm. Like they didn't go fully for it. They kind of settled for a nil-nil because they were in a difficult place, as Roy Keane would say. So, and he came out and it kind of, you kind of feel like it's playing to the crowd a bit. It's mm. like, well, we, we tried really, United weren't, that's why they got a point. It does yeah. feel a little bit like to me, I, like kind of performative. He seems kind of brushing off the, the Putting the fact that it was nil nil more on the fact that United were extra defensive and stopped yeah. him, rather not than talking about how score. bad they were yeah. going yeah. forward. It's nothing to do with sloppy. us not being able to score. It's them not letting us score. Yeah, basically. That that's really, really what's it. happened is they've gone into that game, and he mentions there about sometimes we should have played the overlap and the shooting instead. They've looked at United and thought, fish in a barrel today, lads. Yeah. We'll fucking smash these. Yeah. Twelve wins out of twelve at home. Let's extend the lead at the top of the table. Or, you know, get back to the top of the table. We beat him seven 0 last time. We beat him five 0 before that. We beat him four 0 before that. Like they were, they thought we're cruising here, and I think he's embarrassed and annoyed that they've taken us too lightly, and that those passes, those shots that should have been passes, were done a lot of it because they thought, well, we'll beat these one way or another. You know, all we have to do is just stick around, have a few shots. Either Anana will put one in the back of the net, or Salah will put one in the top corner. And when it didn't work out the way he wanted, I think they felt slightly embarrassed, especially as well. You know, Neville was saying about how it's the, the quietest crowd he's ever heard at Anfield. That again is because the fans thought, and maybe rightly so, you can understand why they did, this is going to be a walk in the park today. And the Anfield atmosphere is actually meant to be massively overrated. Well, that's Gary Neville saying it, who's been yeah. to Anfield more than I have. Yeah. So I'll, I'll quote him and, you so know. Nah, I, I agree with that. I've been I mean? to Anfield. Yeah. I think it is. You get, like, you'll never walk alone at the beginning. You'll get, like, a few chances at the beginning. If something's happening, they'll, they'll, they'll be up for it. Like, if they scored or whatever. But a ball boy it's, it's overrated. Even oh, Nana said it, didn't he? Like, yeah. You know, he said that he didn't But I just anything. think he, they, he thought, I feel, I feel a bit silly that we haven't beat these because they're shit. Yeah. We're trying to win a league title and we've battered them even when they were good and we were bad. They still battered us. Yeah. Or we still battered them, that's him saying it. Um, and then th their inability to do so, I think, has maybe slightly embarrassed him and has come out it, with this like, like well, I say, it's their fault we didn't beat him. Yeah, well, yeah, remember the whole yeah. when Jose beat him with Chelsea's 2-0 with the Denver Bar when Gerard slipped across the league and they were all going about them parking the bus, Chelsea parked the bus. That's Chelsea winning 2-0. Yeah. And they were still moaning about the way Chelsea set up. And Chelsea played their reserve team because they had that game against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League a few yeah. days later. So they had like, Salah when he was first at Chelsea was playing and um, 
Is it Schwartz in goal and mm. Denver Byer is obviously a yeah. reserve, reserve player. So it is. It does feel a bit like that's what they sort of do when they, they've not got it a result is, and I, it's frustrating for them. They haven't blame even, the opposition. They are weird because they haven't been that good all season. Mm. They've shit house results all season, by yeah. the way. Well, yeah. that, you can, you can, you I watched them. You can end up yeah, I watched them against Palace. And they were very, very like Palace could have easily got points in that game. Um, there's been quite a few games this season where they've had to like score last minute goals. We spoke, we the speak about that with our rivals and stuff to get um, results. And I think they've come to, they've carried that on against us. I don't think they were very good at all. I think we were bad, but I think they were very poor as well. They ran out of ideas very quickly. They were sloppy. They, all they did was like hoof balls a lot of hit and hope from him as well yeah and i thought our box defending was really good from evans and Varane. yeah they were exceptional and do you know what i mean and other than that i think nil nil seems seems about right to be fair to score i don't think either team really deserved to win but i don't think they were good enough either so i don't know what they're all moaning about if they've got anything to blame it's themselves i love that yeah. um like stop moaning and start yeah. looking at yourselves because you can't blame a team especially if a team was missing like Two of our most important players under Eric and I have been Bruno Fernandes and Lissandro Mahrez yeah. and neither of them were playing. Van Dijk's like, I can't believe that they didn't come out and attack and let you know us win. Mean? Yeah, well, like, <laughs> sort of. Next time, we'll Sorry. give you, let you, let you score. Especially when we got battered 7-0 there last season. What do you think we're going to do? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, get a grip. Just quickly before we wrap up. Um, like, it's obviously a point on field. We're six points behind City. We're 11 points off Arsenal at the top which is obviously a big gap, but how much pressure do you think Eric Tenag's under? Um, do you still feel this I, hasn't I, really moved the needle? I almost think, no, I think it has a little bit. I almost think that it's probably already decided one way or another anyway. Yeah. I think if, if it is the case that Jim Ratcliffe will have the say on who's the new manager or who is United's manager, yeah. whether we sack Ten Hag or not, I don't really think, unless you know we went on some astonishing run uh, or we went on some astonishingly bad run, I don't think his mind is going to be changed in the next few weeks. Okay. I think Jim Ratcliffe will have an idea in his head right now whether he likes Ten Hag, whether he believes in this project or not. And I don't really think, you know, let's say what's our best possible next 10 games? Eight wins, a draw and a loss? Like that's the best we could possibly do. I don't even think that would be enough to, for um, Ratcliffe to go, I didn't like him before, but now I'll keep him. He seems okay. quite headstrong, Jim Ratcliffe. I, I think, I think we already, you know, he'll know what's going to happen one way or another already. I think it's a situation where um, if there's any reason to keep him, then United are, are going to veer towards I think United don't want to sack another manager. Yeah. It's, but it's one of those where if the results become that bad and it almost seems untenable, then it would happen. And it seemed at certain points in the season where it could start to go in that direction. Yeah. I think the fact he drew 0-0 at Anfield has obviously bought him a little bit of time. But I still think he's on, on a little bit of watch to see whether United actually develop a little bit of form, synergy and like some some kind of resemblance of a performance. Do you know what I mean? Because even we've drawn 0-0 at Anfield, but the performance still wasn't great. I think the fact that we have so many injuries from yeah. the start of the season hasn't helped. But... I think it's one of them where the next couple of months he still needs to show something or show some sort of progression for his job to be solidified. But I think for now, I don't think he's in trouble, so to speak. But I think he's just kind of like on a little bit of watch. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Dale Gibson has been a member of the first team for 36 months. Says Sancho turned into him into a meme last season at Old Trafford. Spurs did the same again a few weeks later. He's an absolute melt. Keane was bang on. Talk about my dyke very quickly. Give us your wallet of the week. Oh. Wally of the week, eh? Um, who's been a Wally this week? I mean, there's been a bit of Twitter beef, haven't there? Yeah, there's always a bit of that going on. But, hmm. I don't know, actually. Maybe, I mean, it's got to be Dermot Gallagher, on it? I know we've spent most of the podcast talking about it, but, like, he's obviously being paid to go on Sky. So it's not just like a, a charity thing that he's, yeah. you know, he's doing. Like, you're on there for a reason. It's a TV show. Be honest. Like, you're you're literally the voice of these referees. And you can go on there and express it in the gentlest possible way that maybe one of the, one of your mates has, has made a mistake. Go and do it and be honest. And, and that way you might actually get people... Like you said, if he came out and said, you know what, Michael Oliver's had a very stressful game. It wasn't one that boiled over, but it's one of the biggest games of the season, very high pressure. He's got to the end of the match, and now all of a sudden, when he's, been, he's put in a very good performance, he's got Dergo Dallo screaming at him. 
and I think that he's he's reacted to that and mm -hmm. he's and he's given it you know he's, he's taken the harshest possible line and he sent him off and maybe he'll regret that but I can see why he did it as a human being if he says that people go you know what I still disagree with it but it's a decent point but yeah, instead yeah. of just pretending that all I see is what's already happened and there's nothing you can do to change my mind I just think it it makes a, a mockery of the of the, the the sort of panel that he's on and also it just makes people like you said question referees and dislike referees even more because no. they're seen as like unjudgeable and I just think that that's you know not a really a good precedent to set Ronnie who's yours? So you've said Michael Oliver or Dermot you said Dermot Gallagher. Gallagher he said Dermot Gallagher I'll, I'll go for Michael Oliver just because it's the easy one yeah and usually you're a lot more prepared for your Wally weeks than me well so but Michael Oliver is just the, the really obvious one and I think he'll know that and I think he'll know he's been a bit of a Wally he was either going to be him or Van Dyke. Um, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with a different one. I'm gonna go with Richard Keys. Oh wow, what's he uh, saying? I haven't even seen him, mate. I'm, I, I honestly I think Dwight York's gonna end up wrapping a chair around his head because he just he was going on with himself yesterday. I, I don't watch being sport addict. Someone tweeted a clip of it, and it was just him going on about how United embarrass themselves and all this nonsense. You know, well, how do we embarrass ourselves? By nil nil and all this, just talking rubbish. And Dwight York sat there <laughs> probably thinking, do I really need this though? Like he got, I think Dwight York is proper chill got annoyed with him and was like what are you on about kind of thing and it's just embarrassing watching a glorified weatherman acting like he's some sort of footballing expert uh, so yeah he does med in I've put just a link look, go on it's like he's melting isn't it mm. Richard Keys. What, what do you mean just the way he looks visually yeah it looks like he's melting mm. he's, I mean, hair dryer on a candle hair dryer on a <laughs> he's got a bit of that going on yeah yeah he, he, I always think face starting, I was, to, face starting to sag a little I always think he's wet looks like he's wearing a suit that's like two sizes too small like he's packed it in. Do you know what I mean? Really you almost look, like, there's nothing wrong with being a big lad, but embrace it. Don't pretend that you're a size, you know what I mean, 40 when you're not. It's just weird. He still wants to attract the young ladies, isn't it? Well, we don't want you to get into that, that for legal reasons. Um, right, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, there's a link in the chat to the event in Dublin. Come it's along on the 28th. Live. You're going to see me, One. Joe, Wes Brown, Adam McCola, Stephen Alson, and Uncle Webby. Um, also, don't forget as well to go and check out Manscaped. Big thank you to them for sponsoring the podcast. Ronnie, where can people find you? Um, Ronaldo Brown, 98 under score on the the X app and it's Joe Smith me. 93 is it Correct. on the X app you see I've got that one right uh, so you know where to find these guys you know where to find me as well don't forget to hit like share and subscribe <laughs> this has been Planet Podcast thanks for watching